joining us this evening on June 7, 2024 for a Howell Township Committee meeting. At this time, I would like to reconvene. I'll begin with the roll call. Councilwoman Fisher? Here. Councilman Geisha? Here. Councilwoman O'Donnell? Here. Deputy Mayor Nodell is absent this evening. Mayor Berger? Present. Thank you. If we could please stand and say the Pledge of Allegiance and have a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. May I have a motion for May 7 minutes? Motion to accept May 7th minutes. The second? Second. Councilwoman Fisher? Abstain. Thank you. Councilman Geisher? Yes. Councilwoman O'Donnell? Yes. Mayor Berger? Yes. Thank you. Um, do we have anything from the dais that we wanted to discuss at this time? Mr. Clark? Sure. I, I have a couple updates just very quickly. Um, I'd like to acknowledge our friend and sort of compatriot uh, Chris Hill. He was just promoted to the CEO of the National PAL, so that's an awesome achievement. They're always a good partner. Congratulations to Chris. Um, so I'll let Matt fill us in, but we've been very successful lately in terms of uh, getting our grants, so that is always excellent news. Um, pickleball courts at Soldier Memorial, we anticipate, or Deerwood, um, probably, what did we say, mid-June, a little bit later? Yeah, probably two more weeks. Um, they're painted now, they're going to, they need to dry and kind of cure, and then we'll be open for business. Um, you know, we're looking tonight at the potential for a signalization of an intersection on Route 33, so that's that's always helpful. Uh, no promises as to how it all works out. I know DOT has to do a, a study to make sure it's warranted, but um, that's always a, it's always helpful to have safety wherever we can, and that is basically it for this evening. Thank you. We have a full enough agenda, but just one, one update on the, on the grants. We did receive um, $560,000 towards the, Neck, the Echo Lake Playground, the all-inclusive playground that we had uh, proposed um, several months ago. Uh, and then also our grant consultant had identified an additional grant opportunity to cover the, some of the 25% of our portion of the project, uh, and an additional 70000 was awarded for that. So we're looking at over 630000 towards the project uh, out of the whole $750,000 project. So it's a, it's a pretty good deal for the township. Yeah. Just one more quick thing, too. I just wanted to acknowledge, because we haven't had a meeting since, uh, the excellent attendance at Memorial Day. You know, veterans are one of our biggest assets. And most recently, uh, just a few days ago, was the 80th anniversary of D-Day. So thank you to everybody who has served. No legal updates. <laughs> That's wonderful. <laughs> okay. At this time, I would like to open the meeting for the hearing of the citizens and public comment on the consent agenda items. Each person shall first give their name and address to the clerk. The council should be addressed as a collective body and not as individual members. Each person shall have one turn to address the council, and comments shall not exceed a total of five minutes. Speakers shall be notified when their time has run, and no time extensions shall be permitted. There's no names on the list. Is there anyone that wants to come up to talk on the consent agenda items? on any matters regarding public concern. Caitlin, would you just write the name down so Elaine Taylor. on the list? Yeah. Your address? Elaine Taylor, uh, 1055 Maxim Southern Road in Howell. Um, I'm here tonight uh, to represent the farmers and uh, the concerns of the ordinances that are being crafted. 
I feel very disappointed that the uh, farmers are the way that they're being treated. I don't. I just feel like there's a lack of communication now. Of what's going on? There's there was uh, a problem with uh, Eagle Oaks, and we're not sure of what the problems are. So you know, it would be nice if we could uh, have a meeting and be privy to what what is transpiring with that. And, um, you know, the farmers want to be active participants in crafting any future ordinances that affect the farming community in Howell. And I just want that on the record. Um, the farmers they want to not feel threatened by our governing body. And we need to feel that we can work together. And we need to push hard in doing that and really work together. And I just hope that we can do that. Um, I, I feel like it's really important for everyone to know how vital the farming community is in Howell and, <clears throat> and what they contribute to the community so much. I mean, there are so many, there are so many farms. There are, I don't know, over 300 farms in, in the community. So we, we just need to all pu need to pull together and work together for the common good of everyone because the farming community affects the general population in our wonderful town. And we really do need to work together. Um, I just feel that the farmers need to feel free to do the hard work that they have to do every day without feeling threatened by authority. And I just feel that we need less government. We need less, less ordinances, less laws to constrict the govern the to constrict the farmers from doing what they need to do. We all work so hard to produce the little that we you know, what we produce. You know, up early, bed early, we just gotta we we work so hard. So you just gotta try to really work together with us and you know, really appreciate it if you would keep that in the forefront of your minds. Thank you. May I may I say something? I was just. Uh, well, you typically keep all comments till the end, but if it's something short that you think is pertinent, I just wanted it. It's not going to be a back and forth, though. I just yeah. just want. The the comment was that we should work together to allow the farmers to do their jobs. I don't think we're. I don't believe that anything that we are looking at is is doing that. I, I just wanted that to be on the record. I mean, I don't think that we are in any way, shape, or form changing ordinances or resolutions to decrease a farmer's ability to farm. That's not what we're doing. And I just felt that that's what you were implying. And I, did, I just wanted to make that clear. Uh, it's not a back and forth public, yeah. Hi, um, Teresa Reed, 89 Howell Road. Go ahead. Can I just start? Yes, yeah, please. please. So um, I gave this a lot of thought. I spent a lot of time in prayer. I'm trying to figure out or just contemplate why we just can't get this resolved, why we are just, everybody's just speaking. It's, we're speaking, you guys are talking, everybody's saying that we're trying to work together, but the bottom line is nothing's happening. You know, actions speak louder than words. And I don't know what's going on as far as how a township is concerned with why we can't supplement our income with some of these special events. That's all we're looking to do. We have to pay the winter bills. 
I work for free. I tell everybody that. I make no bones about it. I do not take a paycheck. I do everything out of the passion of my heart to help people get healthy. That's the goal of my farm, to teach the next generation how to farm. So I want to address this Eagle Oaks letter as a woman. Many women that I talk to, it's very difficult to say, wow, we're going to really impact Eagle Oaks revenue. I have to say that. It just honestly, if someone had come up with our house tavern, it might be a little bit more believable. But Eagle Oaks, they're a country club. They throw events all year round. We're not hurting them. If you are, and all the women I'm sure is going to agree, if you are looking at Eagle Oaks, you're also looking at the manor. You're looking at the chateau. You're not looking at a farm because you're going to spend six figures. The farm is half of that, any farm. So it's a very, I just, honestly, I just feel like if you think we're a bunch of dumb women farmers, I'm not sure. But, you know, we get it. We don't think that Eagle Oaks is really going to suffer. So I, I just don't know what that is about. But it definitely put a damper on us to be able to book for the fall. So my son is 33, put his life into it. He's on unemployment for the winter. He's going to be on unemployment next winter. Thank God he's not looking to get married because getting married and having a family, he can't afford it. Can't do it. We need the supplemental income. It's vital. And honestly, we are just, if you talk to many of the Howell residents, the ones that visit my juice bar, they left Staten Island in Brooklyn because they want to see Howell Farming. They want to drive down a beautiful Howell Road. They don't want the overbuilding of the warehouses, the construction pit or whatever we've got going on. And I know there's been talk about public health and safety, but honestly, there's a lot of public health and safety that doesn't get addressed. And I know I've seen people get up and talk about the swamps in their yard, which will now be a mosquito net this summer. Mosquitoes give limes. People are going to get deathly sick. So there's a public health and safety issue there. But it's all about the farms. I mean, I voted you guys in. And I trusted you. And I said, OK. I didn't come to any meetings. Before last year, I didn't know anything about it. Voted you in, trusted you. I've got a farm to run. I'm working crazy hours. And now I'm spending a lot of time doing this. I need to be working on my farm. I need to be, you have no idea how many people that come in and seek my advice about, you know, they don't feel good, this, that, and how, what can they do to get better. That's what we're all about, helping people, having kids come in, take a tour, of the greenhouse, Girl Scouts, workshops. Can't do it because I'm, I'm here. I've got to do this. I've got to try to fight. And it's not like I'm trying to get rich. Just want to pay the winter bills. I, and it's on record. I, I don't care. I have a $30,000 visa bill. Haven't paid New Jersey natural gas yet. Finally was able to pay my sales tax. We need it. Lettuce produce, not a ton of money in it but it does make people healthy when you grow it right. So I just would like us to please get together and no more words. I, I just want, we need action. I, I'm just going to remain prayerful that there is going to be positive action coming that's going to allow us to move forward, to hold some events, so that we can stay alive. Because my son and I sat down three to four years, we're out. Thank you. Your time has ended. Thank you. Thank you. Caitlin, please make sure you jot the names down. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Anna Kristjánsdóttir, 11 Mouse Creek Court, Howell. Good evening, Howell Township Council, Mayor Berger. Um, and how administrative personnel. I'd like to thank you all for the transparency with the process of formulating these ordinances. Um, I, first, I, I guess I forgot to mention, I am appointed Farmers Advisory Committee member, uh, which means I have been um, 
engaging and networking with the local farmers considerably. I also work locally. I'm very involved with the community. Um, I don't follow D's and R's, just so you guys know. I follow integrity. And when I see integrity, I see respect. And I think all of us want to be there, and we're trying to get there, but, you know, we get, we're all human. We get mixed up a little bit. You know, I don't blame anybody, but we want to move forward. So I'd like to read my statement here. I'd like to thank you all for, for your transparency with the process. I'm going to try and speak slow, slow too, so you can hear me. Um, and I hate speaking. Uh, formulating the ordinances, which by all of our accounts would set a precedence in the state of New Jersey in moving our farming community forward. It has not been an easy process, nor without emotions, but it has been engaging. For the record, it is not what the farming community wants, but with the evolution of government intrusion into all things local, we see it to our benefit and yours to help guide the process. I respectfully request to know what the township's plan is moving forward regarding the farm ordinances. Farmers also must know if the township is going to defend its rights to adopt ordinances permitting qualifying farms to hold special occasion events. We have all worked exhaustingly to get the right combination of ordinances for our very diverse and evolving farms. Very special, diverse, evolving farms. It is so important, as vulnerable as our farming community is, to get it right from the get-go or at least without harming the future of farming. Now, Eagle Oaks Golf Club, a business worth millions of dollars, has inserted itself into an already complicated process. And, f and the farming community has formed a consensus that the Eagle Oaks Golf Club only goal is to provide the Howell Township administration leverage against the farming community. This lawsuit is in support of business overreach into local communities, into local farms, which in no way compete with Eagle Oaks elite clientele. They only provide the organic support of the community via healthy food and healthy environment and integrity. The Eagle Oaks community benefits from local farms, local farms, do not benefit from Eagle Oaks. And now they threaten our livelihoods. The lawsuit is far-fetched and should be giving no credibility. Farm stands and small special occasion events do not threaten Eagle Oaks' viability in the least. The only threat is the bad publicity caused by Eagle Oaks, thinking that farmers will not see through these shenanigans. We cannot, as a community, sit idle as corporations having more money and more sway have their way. We all know that it is our farms that provide the biggest benefit to healthy and thriving communities. The lawsuit is a sleight of the hand to buy government officials more time to figure out how to micromanage local farms. We asked through and through the entire process, let our farms stay viable while we work through ordinances. That was our one request. Thank you all for listening. As we work towards our future, which is built upon mutual respect and collaborative efforts for all of our benefit, not just the one with the best lawyer and the most financial backing, where we are very mindful of what we choose to cultivate. In closing, we invite Eagle Oaks Golf Club members into our community of farms, special events, they do not invite us to theirs. This alone is a statement that shows all of us that we are getting all of our priorities mixed up. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I'm Susan Springer, Bear Creek Herbery, 494 Lakewood Farmingdale Road. I just wanted to read some of the comments. I don't know if you follow Howell Happenings or All Around Ramtown or any of those groups online, <clears throat> but there was a post 
about Eagle Oaks. And I just wanted to read a couple of the comments from the local um, citizens about that. Um, it is obvious <laughs> from comments being made that people will travel out of Howell if they want a farm event. If they want that aesthetic, if they want nature, if they want to be sitting next to a chicken coop and they want to be in a greenhouse, they're not going to go to Eagle Oaks. They're going to go to Pennsylvania. Howell is going to lose business. Our farms are going to lose revenue that we could be generating. Um, so I've chosen to read just a few of the mild comments. I have to say that many of them, many of the others, were blasting the Howell administration in no uncertain terms and using a lot of expletives. So I'm not going to read those. You can read them if you care to online on Howell Happenings. Um, so here's one. Let the farms run their events. How can you even compare a country club to a farm setting? No competition at all. People who want fancy schmancy will continue to go to Eagle Oaks. Let the farmers have their events. This is ridiculous. Um, Eagle Oaks is worried about competition from small farmers trying to survive. It's a joke. <laughs> There's no way that we would ever choose Eagle Oaks over a beautiful farm setting. That's what we choose. That's what we want. God bless Eagle Oaks. They have a beautiful property. We are not hurting their business. We never will. It's apples to oranges. It is a joke. <sighs> Farms should be allowed to hold events. Not everyone can afford Eagle Oaks. I can't afford Eagle Oaks. I've never been there. I enjoyed the website. Place is outrageous. I'm sure you've been there to certain events. I never have. God bless them. Our little farms aren't going to hurt them. I can't even believe this is being questioned. Business is business, and this is ridiculous. And the final one, I traveled to Pennsylvania for my wedding because I wanted a farm setting. Eagle Oaks is beautiful. It's just not what I wanted, and I would never go there. Thank you. Betty Velez Gimbel, 97 Victory Road. I'm the owner of Squonkum Brook Farm. As an owner, farm owner, I come before the board with only the intentions to advocate and ensure the protection of the farmers in Howell, along with making certain that viability is taken fully into consideration. I would like to address uh, last council meeting. The delivered address to this governing body at the last council meeting was in response to the original amended ordinance involving farm stands and retail that was not in line with the right to farm criteria. It was only after hearing the accusation of ulterior motive, HFU, Howell Farmers United, was prompted to review the responding email from Matt Howard again only to find the amended document attached and buried at the bottom of a string of corresponding emails. We all missed it. The email received from Mr. Howard gave no indication the ordinance was amended or it being attached for our review. Only his confusing and disparaging answers to our concerns could be seen sent previously within the string of corresponding emails leaving us to believe no changes would be made. I have been an advocate for 27 years in the public school system as a 20-year veteran teacher and now school counselor in my seventh year. Communication is key. Communication has been encouraged by your Farmers Advisory Committee members throughout this process. It would have fostered the collaboration the collaborative relationship we were building to know 
assistance from Ms. Honigfeld was obtained regarding the concerns we had for the farm stand retail aspect, which was apparent in the amended ordinance once reviewed. As far as Eagle Oaks' concerns regarding the drafted ordinances, the ordinances as they are written are not true special event occasions that would compete with their operation. Again, they are not true special occasion events. They are farm related events that would be protected under the right to farm law provided the farmer meet the criteria within the law, criteria such as taking health and safety into account with these farm-related events. Again, they are not true special occasion events in the form as they are written. Transparency is also something the Howell Township residents have verbally petitioned for and Anna is very positive moving forward that we will receive this transparency. And we ask that now. Mr. Howard's latest email to the Farmers Advisory Committee shared with HFU referenced a meeting with Eagle Oaks last week. And I quote, we had a discussion with Eagle Oaks last week and understand the objection a bit clearer than even the letter detailed. We are in the process of circling up with governing body members individually so we can come up with a path forward. It should be noted that many of their objections are based on things we warned about when trying to draft these ordinances. We are still committed to finding a solution and will reach out once we have a path forward. What are those details that you now understand, given that they are not true special events? In addition to the farm events, we still have concerns regarding the other farming ordinances as they are written, and would like to meet with the administration to discuss them prior to any introduction or adoption. Will you give us that opportunity and be transparent? Thank you. I don't understand the difference between a special event versus a farm event. If if it's a birthday party, what is that? There is no difference. So in a meeting, not our last meeting with the farmers, it started off by the farmers group saying, well, these don't have anything to do with farms. So let's take out the farm related part of it. And the answer was, you can't because it's not accessory to a farm use anymore. Under the MLUL, now you're a completely different use and we can't make that an accessory use. We can't carve out an administrative approval because everything we've warned about, about other assembly uses coming after us, we're allowing an assembly use on a site that has nothing to do with farming. That was their request. We said, we can't do that. It has to be farm related. If it's not farm related, it's not accessory, and these ordinances cannot go anywhere. That's, our, that's from our esteemed land use attorney. If, I, I don't know what the point is trying to be made there. And it came up again. These are protected under right to farm. No, they are not. This has been told countless times by myself, by the administration, and we have the emails from the county and the state saying the same thing. I can't drive it home anymore. My turn? Yes, please. Hi, Lawrence Way, 15 Renway, how? Good evening, Council, Good Mayor, evening. our employees over here, thanks. Uh, on the agenda, R24-205, Ian McGear appointed Secretary of Mobile Home Rent Stabilization and Control Board. I'd like to know more information about Mr. McGear and his qualifications for the appointment. Uh, notice that 23 establishments in Howell are getting their liquor licenses renewed. I'm sure that that's well deserved. But yet, our discussion about cannabis business and how seems to have been tabled indefinitely. This is another revenue stream for the town that can relieve the taxpayers of their burden. 
and why aren't we talking about it? 24-12, 2025 Polaris Ranger Crew North Star for transportation and security at events in the amount of $35,344. And out of a line number, was this budgeted for? Uh, where is the money coming from for this purchase? I uh, applaud uh, the township's acceptance of the gift of a backhoe from the county, saving taxpayer dollars. And congratulations to the township on getting awarded several grants that will help our uh, revenue stream for the town this year. I always say a grant writer is often worth their salary exponentially. So thanks for that. 24-33. I like the identity of the tenant renting space in the admin building. 24-225. Uh, uh, what is the purpose for the $5 million in tax anticipation notes? Is that uh, a cash flow thing, or why are we doing this? I appreciate an explanation. I'm sorry, that was 02425? 24-225. Tax anticipation notes, $5 million. 24-231, uh, we got a, uh, an overage on uh, the award there of $74,469. Um, will the township be spending that to expand the program or for some other purpose? 24-228, uh, explain the application of the funds uh, that we are receiving from that to improve our recycling efforts in the township. Curious to know as a green team member. Uh, ordinance 24-24 concerning rentals in town. I find the fines are very low for uh, first and second offense. $1,000 for first offense and $2,000 for second offense. If these people are warehousing people in private homes. They're making a lot of money and those fines are way too low to discourage this type of behavior. Um, I was told through the grapevine that the wind farm resolution is, is going to be withdrawn uh, and reworked for further consideration. I certainly hope so. And finally, I echo the comments uh, of the farmers this evening, apples and oranges, comparing them to an enclosed event space for rich folks. Thank you very much. Richard Cioli, 133 West Renaissance Boulevard. Good evening, Mayor, Good evening. Council, employees. Uh, I'm here in support of Resolution 24-233. Can you speak a little louder? Yes, I'm here to support Resolution 24-233, which is an issue of public safety. As a member of the Equestria Civics Committee, uh, there are two specific entities I would like to express my gratitude. Number one, to Mr. Joseph Clark for being a true partner in this endeavor, and as well as the 834 people who literally pulled the clipboard out of my hand when they, when they realized that this is an issue of safety on Route 33. Uh, if we could, if we get a traffic light, at Yellowbrook, and we have a traffic light at Colts Neck, we'll, we'll build a window where we can literally get out onto 33 because we're not merging into traffic. We're driving into it perpendicularly, and it's dangerous. And i just like to express my appreciation to everyone for working so hard on this issue. Thank you. Is Felicia DeVita from 211 Moses Milch Drive. You could pull down the microphone. Yeah. Thank you. Um, first, I wanted to thank Mr. Clark for taking the time he met with myself and my neighbors um, and has gone above and beyond to help us with our concerns. However, I felt it's important to bring these topics to the board meeting as it's my understanding that there are some amendments to the rental laws that will be introduced. Someone needed to stand here today and address these issues and the impact it has on our community. 
I myself moved here from Brooklyn, New York, almost two years ago because we love the beautiful farm community, the ability, <clears throat> excuse me, the ability for our child to play outside without worrying of a speeding car that was going to hit him or being able to cross the street when he comes off the school bus. I'm speaking of the recent buying frenzy that has created a terrible situation across the board. There are people that are buying homes, mostly without even being listed. These homes are purchased and they're being rented by the room. Some of them are not even waiting for rental certificates before they start renting. Once we file a complaint, they are hit with a summons and then they pay the summons and they're able to continue to receive their rental certificate. They are deliberately not taking care of their property in hopes of lowering the value of our neighborhood and convincing us to sell. This is not fair to both the tenants occupying those homes as well as the surrounding property owners. What our community wants to do is make our local politicians aware of the problems that are going on with the influx of families in our neighborhood so that we can open a wider conversation on getting state laws revised. Speeding has increased. Our development is overcrowded with cars, making driving around difficult with speed limits. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I apologize. Um, it's just not possible to enforce every single development and the speeding that goes on in these developments. These issues are taxing our community, as well as the school system, recycling plan, police department, and many more agencies. When handing out these certificates and allowing 25 people to live in a house, we have to accommodate for the amount of people that are coming in, the ESL students that are sitting alone at tables in overcrowded classrooms, because we don't know what to do with them. This isn't fair to both our children or the new students that are entering our schools. Our hope is that by opening up this conversation, we can discuss what we need to do to make necessary changes to get the state involved and amend some of these rental guidelines. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Good evening. Professionals. Um, I come to a lot of council meetings, and it still surprises me when the Your mayor. Your name, please. Oh, Mark Parisi, Two Castle Court. Thank you. Um, it still surprises me when when the mayor tries to speak and gets like feels like they get the mayor gets interrupted, but the mayor presides over the meeting, and it's my understanding that under the count the meeting protocol, everything flows through the mayor. So I'm just I'm just a little confused at times. Um, I know that we've been trying to, or the council and the professionals have been trying to button up some of the back and forth dialogue with, you know, during public comment, you know, to limit, you know, conflict. Um, but the council meeting protocol does say that, you know, the, it says here on, under, under G, um, the council should be addressed as a collective body and not individual members. Council members wishing to ask a question of a speaker, either a fellow member or a public participant can request to do so through the mayor. So when pu the public does speak, if council members want to ask the public a question, they can do so through a asking the mayor. Um, questions, section H, questions from a speaker will ordinarily not be addressed at the meeting during which they are asked ordinarily not, but doesn't mean it doesn't exclude it. You know, if somebody does ask a question, there can be, I guess, a respectful dialogue between a speaker and, and the council and the mayor. I guess, uh, uh, depending on what this, the subject matter is. So I just wanted to just remind, I mean, this is the protocol, so, you know, I guess we should try to adhere to it or not be as stringent, you know, at times. But um, one of the other things that I wanted to address was, uh, you know, this whole issue with, with Eagle Oaks. And I, I'm trying to understand, because I, I read the letter, it was made public, um, that if our professionals are telling us that the ordinances relate to farm-related activities, uh, that how does that impact Eagle Oaks? Because Eagle Oaks is not a farm-related business enterprise. So, you know, how can they claim that there is some type of preferential treatment or competition when these are two separate business uses? Uh, Eagle Oaks is not a farm, so I mean, maybe we can get some clarification for regarding that. So somebody in the public had asked, how much money does Eagle Oaks pay per year in taxes? So obviously tax assessment cards are publicly available. And I went and looked it up, and Eagle Oaks is 201 acres. And their land is assessed at $1.7 million. 
the improvements on the property are assessed at somewhere around 16 million or so, okay? So I know this town wants rateables, they want tax revenue, they need it in order to continue to run the, the, the township. I mean, that's obvious. But how is it possible that 200 acres of real estate at a golf course is only assessed at 1.7 million? And I'll add that in the last th three years, their land assessment only went up approximately $50,000. Put in perspective, I have one acre of property, and my land went up $30,000 in the last three years. And there have, they have 201 acres, and it only went up $50,000. So maybe that needs to be looked into. And here's another comp that you could look at. Manasquan River Golf Course, 100 acres. You know what they're assessed at? $23 million. So how is it possible that this private country club, their land is only assessed at $1.7 million. I'm sure there's other people in this room that have land that's sizable amount of acres that's assessed at proportionally a lot more than what that golf club is assessed at. So that's what I have to say. Is there anyone else that wants to come up and speak? Um, I need a motion to close public comment. Yes, can I have a motion to close public? I'll make a motion to close public comment. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay. So could I just... Please, I, I don't believe that any one of us sitting up here is comparing a farm to Eagle Oaks. I, I, I do not believe that that is the case that's occurring. I believe what is occurring is the people up here and, on the, and, and the professionals are trying to ensure the safety of people that are going to be on that farm. Now. Please, just, I, I, I've been listening, and I am the first one to buy local. I have supported the farmer's market in, insanely. I've spent so much money there. That's not what this is about. But if I'm in a wheelchair, and I'm at an event on a farm, how do I get from my car into the facility? That's just what comes on in my head. If you're bringing food into the farm for a party, where is the food coming from? How, is the temperature control good? Is the Department of Health uh, uh, you know, acknowledging that? Those are all safety issues that I'm not quite sure if, if they've been thought about on, on your side of the ledger, but they certainly have been thought about on this side of the ledger because that is a safety issue. Uh, you know, you might not agree but 300 farms, if they all were able to provide all of these events, the rest of the township, the members of the, that live in town are paying the taxes on that as well. So I, I think you have to kind of look at things that are equal. I support it, and I will, I will vote for many farming ordinances and resolutions, but I think they need to be reviewed and understood on both sides and understand that this can cause a huge liability in the town. I'm sorry that you, well, I'm, 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 that your perception is, is, is very different. Um, but being a person who couldn't walk with one ankle, I couldn't get off and on a farm with my little wheelie thing. I'm sorry, but I, I just feel like that the, the that we're being kind of attacked, and I don't think that that's fair. I don't think that that is 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 what's happening here, and it's just you know that's that's what I have to say about that. At this time, are we ready to vote? I was wondering if I might. 
um, administration will address some of these issues, but I think the, uh, mm. something that I would really like to be spoken about, the letter from Eagle Oaks, I read it once. I know that you met with them. The impression that I had was not um, what I think that some of the farmers have perceived. My understanding of their complaint was they had to go through uh, the planning stages um, and the site reviews uh, to do what they're doing. So I thought that Eagle Oaks had a concern with the fact that if a special event was going to be held, uh, say for a, 100 people, and I'm just using any number because I think 100 people probably is a, a good figure for a special event. But I thought that they were concerned that we were looking at something that would allow a special event, not, and I say special because that's what Governor Murphy brought to the table. He wanted special events to be uh, able to be done so that farmers and their properties could in, uh, bring in more money. So that thought, my in my opinion, was the basis of his concern. But Eagle Oaks, I thought, was concerned with the road to get to the special event. What do you have to do? You have to do site plans. You have to hire an engineer. Or, you know the myriad of things you'd have to do. That it's certainly we don't think that Eagle Oaks. Well, I don't think that they're thinking this, but. Maybe the meeting needs to be between the farmers and Eagle Oaks, and then Eagle Oaks can, can explain to them what they're afraid of. I interpreted that letter to say it was unfair to have uh, farming do retail businesses without jumping through the same hoops, if you will, that Eagle Oaks had to do to do some of their events. Now, if I've missed the boat on that letter, I'd like to hear it now. So, so both to the mayor and to councilman, you're 100 percent right on everything you said. Um, the letter is dealing with the process of the approval and the jumping through hoops. And when we met with Eagle Oaks, they pointed out that our process and our ordinances were not forcing the jumping through hoops that they had to go through and were missing the mark on health and safety. Yes, so, uh, and just to jump in. So anything that the farms want to do, they can do. They just, at this point, they need to go to the planning board for site plan approval or they need to go to the zoning board for a use variance because it may not be a permitted use. So we're actually working, as the mayor pointed out, trying to increase the amount of rights that they're able to exercise without a lot of sort of regulatory interference. It's not the case that we're taking away things. Anybody that wants to do any of these events right now can go file an application today and then the planning board will schedule it or the zoning board will schedule it. What we're trying to do, with all of your help, is to create a set of ordinances that carve out exceptions to that process and that allows a more streamlined sort of point of access into that market for the farms. Now, we received an objection from Eagle Oaks, and it's not to the competition, it's to the process, and it's to the things that they have to do during site plan approval that aren't readily apparent in the ordinances we're creating. So I'm going to turn it back over to Matt because I've interrupted long enough, but I just wanted to make that point. It's, it's exactly right, and those are the points I was going to make. The, the, the township's not saying no. township's saying, here's what you have to do to do it, um, per, the, per the municipal land use law. And the municipal land use law is there to protect health and safety, protect your zone plan, protect the neighbors, public notice, everything. It's there for that reason. And we're saying, just follow the process. And there's obviously a disconnect that what we're hearing from the community is, no, we do not want to. We will not follow the process. Well, it's in the eyes of public safety, a lot of those items. Actually, every item of site, site plan can be tied to it. Lighting, you got to see where you're going at night. Ingress and egress, you gotta make sure it's safe pulling in and out. Yeah. Circulation, safe driving around. ADA, like you said, Mayor. Health and safety, I mean, these are all items that they're telling us they don't wanna comply with. This is a problem. And no, this is a problem. Because I don't, like I don't have the authority to review those items. The municipal land use law does not give the land use officer or the zoning officer that authority. The planning board does. We can't usurp their powers. So all of those items are supposed to be <laughs> checked and reviewed. And that's all we're asking for. We're trying to carve out and make it easier. There still is a path forward that we can maybe do that. <clears throat> it probably doesn't look like the ordinances that were introduced recently. Um, 
to go over some of the specifics said, I, I don't know what the beef is with me, to be honest. I'm being accused of sending an email with an attachment that they lost and now it's my fault. I don't know why. Um, they are accusing me of dealing with our county, our county representatives at the Ag Board and then I didn't tell them so that they didn't know that I got their input. I'm doing my homework. I'm doing everything that in, in my power, spending a lot of time trying to get these ordinances right. And I'm talking with the county, I'm talking with the state, I'm talking with surrounding towns. But I didn't let you know? Really? Is that because you're embarrassed that an email comes back from the county and the state saying, you know, the town's doing a lot for you. The town's doing what they're supposed to do. And we're trying our best. And it's still not good enough. I don't know where we go from here because this idea that we're lacking transparency is not true. Every time that we come up with an ordinance, we're talking. It takes us time to formulate an ordinance. So the fact that you haven't heard from us is because we don't have guidance. We don't have a path forward yet. When we have something, we're going to reach out. But reaching out doesn't mean that you get everything you're going to ask for in this scenario because there's a disconnect. There's a disconnect to the level of risk that the township should take on for this. There's a disconnect to the level of public notice that we're going to not provide. There's a disconnect to the liability. There's a lot of disconnects here. And at some point, we have to decide if we're going to move forward with something that makes sense or nothing at all. I just wanted to be sure that I was reading the letter correctly with the intent that Eagle Oaks was not afraid of competition. Correct. They were concerned with the, the process. process that they had to go through for retail business and what a special event, even on a farm setting, if it's a, you know, a large event and then it's, out, it's a larger scope outside the Farming Act. I mean, the right to farm, uh, and I can't say this enough, is not being challenged and it's not being withdrawn. So I'll presume everybody that um, wanted to plant their garden and intends to sell their tomatoes or corn, you know, uh, at their stand at their end of their, their driveway or whatever, that's going to continue because the right to farm says you can, you know, you do this. So and, and, and I'll say it again. It's not, the special events are not right to farm protected. I'll say it again. The special events are not right to farm protected. We have to carve it out in our ordinance. Which means we have to follow the municipal land use law. Every aspect of site plan approval has some tie to health and safety. Section 2 of the municipal land use law talks about the goals of zoning. They're all tied to safety. Whether it's traffic, whether it's environmental concerns, whatever it is, they're all tied to it. There's only so far that we can go and cut all that out. I, I have a question for the audience. So there are multiple farms here this evening, yes? Has any of you developed a site plan on what you think your event space would look like? Yes. You have. Yes. And you've taken into consideration lighting, mm -hmm. toilets, yes. everything. 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 Have you gone to the planning board? No. The cost is ridiculous. Well, well, the problem is are we sure that the structure is structurally sound? And the answer to that is no, because when you change, when you build a barn, you build up to an S use group for the UCC, Uniform Construction Code. When you want to put 100 people in it, it has to be an A use group. Fire sprinklers, ingress and egress, exit lighting. Those aren't done. Those aren't done unless you go and get permits. Those aren't done unless you get a site plan approval that ties the zoning to the permit process. It's how the municipal land use law works. It's how we're protective of health and safety. Because if a fire's in that barn and those things aren't in there, you have a catastrophic, uh, catastrophic incident on your hands. I just want to say one thing. If you want to come up, absolutely. But I, I am not going to go with a back and forth. But that's not going to happen. I just want to clarify something. That means the power Please come up. I'm sorry. I know. So, Mayor, public comment's over. I suggest if we continue conversations with individuals of the public, you can do so after the meeting. Again, all of our emails are open. Our telephone numbers are open. All of this communication can continue, it just not in the format of the public meeting. I just have one statement. It's not argumentative. We do agree 
that the special events are not right to farm. We, we, ag we agreed with that a long time ago. What has happened is the ordinance, the way you wrote it, it becomes a direct marketing aspect because when it's written, it says that we have to incorporate the farming agricultural use into it. And that's when it switches to direct marketing. And that's what I wanted to clarify. It now falls under direct marketing and agritourism. And that is really because, obviously, you know, farms of long ago are not here in New Jersey. They are still out west and are dwindling. But the fact of the matter is, here in New Jersey, in order for a farm to be viable, we have to rely on direct marketing and we also have to rely on agritourism. And that's why I was saying that Evil Oaks is different because this is now a direct marketing. It's no it, longer it, a special event. That's again, it's happening. not, it wasn't intended in, the, in, in that form. It was actually purely the safety issues that the concerns are. But, uh, but I can so, even address those issues. So are you done with your comment? Uh, that's it. Yes. Yeah, that's yes. fine. That's okay, fine. so I can address those issues. One of those items, direct farm marketing and agritourism, is covered under right to farm, and the other isn't, special events. So I'm not combining the two. But when you start talking about special events, and you start talking about uh, birthday parties, weddings, anniversary parties, I can, I can carve that out in the ordinance, and that's what we tried to do. But I also now have to address everything that's in the right to farm law about on the on-farm direct marketing, because it's similar. You're bringing the public on, but Right to Farm has specifically said, we, we're not touching the events. We can't. They don't want it. And there's a reason why, liability. But the state has said, yeah, we'll get, let you do it if you get your easement rights, but the township still has to approve it because we don't want the liability. Those are separate. On-farm direct marketing comes into play because you do have public still coming on site, retail purposes, farmers markets, things like that, farm stands. They're all covered under Right to Farm. The law says, go to the county for your, for your approval. County says come to us. So right now, without an ordinance, every farm stand in town technically needs a use variance because it's not in the ordinance. I'm putting it in the ordinance to specifically exclude farm stands and farmers markets and make sure we could do them. Because come on, Howell Township, that, that belongs. There's no question to that. That is covered in our own right to farm ordinance. So those items are in the ordinance as an exclusion to right to farm saying, let's, let's go, we're, we're continuing our practice. Anything else that goes on farm direct marketing, Larger events, it covers pick your own, it covers corn mazes, it covers hay rides. It's all under that law, so there's that item in there that says those need to go for your proper right to farm approval. I couldn't possibly craft an ordinance out of corn maze. I don't know anything about it. So we have these things that are closely related, but regulatorily treated totally differently. And the ordinances have to start to carve that out, and they have. Farm stands and farmers markets approved. Let's, let's do a, a very simple, it's a license through the clerk's office not even a zoning approval, it's a license through the clerk's office, that ordinance is already on the books, we're not creating it. The special events are a separate thing, not right to farm protected, they have to come to the town. The other stuff, they are right to farm protected, there's a process for that. Because it does appear that phrases are being used interchangeably and often where they don't need to be. That's what happens. You know, um, and we're being treated yeah. with a mountain of skepticism for some reason. And nobody trusts administration at this point on this side. I get it. I see it. I hear it. I'm, I'm trying to follow the law. And I have talked with the county, and I've talked to the state to make sure our ordinances are doing just that. And I think I have a pretty good hold on them. And the, or, and, and the county, in writing, has pretty much agreed to that and said, you guys are going about it the right way. Matt, and, you're, and you're taking it head on. I remember when we first started doing this, one of the things we were worried about, the Eagle Oaks thing came out of left field we were more worried about that based upon what we had told them that you went so much in a direction we really didn't want to go we were worried about every tom dick and harry and howell wanting to hold events well and blame blame me for eagle oaks because i sat up here and said somebody's going to challenge us down i'm some, yeah, some, 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 some excuse me excuse me excuse me Come on, don't yell. If you we we heard you, I'm and that's done. enough. I'm done. If you are gonna yell, I'm gonna ask you to leave. So, 
just to continue, I'll take full blame for you, Galoaks, because I sat up here and said, we got to be careful. We need site plan. We need site plan. How many times did I say it? How many times am I saying it tonight? All you Galoaks had to do is watch one meeting and say, oh, we're just going to agree with him. Oh, and, and that's what and they wrote the letter on. In fairness <laughs> to Mr. Howard, it, it, we were all trying to do our best to make the rules as lax as possible so that it would be as easy as possible for the farms to hold these events. And we probably, the pendulum swung too far in that direction. So, um, you know, we're, we're looking at recasting them. I will say for everybody's reference, they may want to take a look at ordinances that were recently passed in Alexandria relating to events like this. Um, they are far more restrictive than what we have done. Um, they take into account a lot of the uh, issues that we've addressed right now. They also take into account the ability of neighbors to object to these events. Right now, we don't have that built into our ordinances. And because they're not going to the planning or zoning board, their neighbors aren't getting notice. So, you know, the Alexandria ordinances do allow for neighbors to object to these events. And perhaps that's something that we need to look at as well so that everybody's rights are sort of protected by this. So, um, yeah, it's going to be a little bit more of a process. And I do think that we're going to have to sort of tip the other way a little bit. And we're going to work with the farmers. Uh, to get the ordinances drafted, but yeah, I think that what we did earlier probably was a little bit too much. So, so just, I mean, we already knew this, that the letter from Should Eagle Oaks, work? come on, the, the uh, letter from Eagle Oaks had nothing to do with their objection to, for competition. It had to do with the process. So that whole thing on social media was created and embellished, and it's all incorrect. So my concern with Eagle Oaks is this. What can they do to us, potentially? You know, where, suppose, suppose we just put our foot down and say, you know what, we like the way it is. Yeah, so, so where do we sit in So this? we pass the ordinances, right? Full steam ahead over their objections. So, you know, they can challenge the ordinances. They'll file a prerogative writ action to arbitrary, capricious. It treats different classes of residents differently, whatever the theory of their case may be. Um, they go into court and they challenge it, and if the court sides with them, then our ordinances are stricken and we're right back to the drawing board. And on top of that, if an ordinance gets challenged, it would be protocol to stop enforcement of that ordinance during the pendency of a litigation matter. Stop implementation of the ordinance. There you go. So, you know, if, if we're in litigation over a specific ordinance, and the validity of that ordinance, a recommendation from attorney to counsel is we will not continue to enforce that ordinance or use that ordinance during the pendency of litigation because we don't know if the court will say it's valid or it's invalid. Uh, like without letting the cat out of the bag, I know we have experts that look at these things and I'm sure that you've consulted them already and they've probably given you an opinion on what we need to do. Right. Absolutely, and they've warned, they've cautioned, and they've said it's got to be farm-related. If it's not, you're, you, then they, they will absolutely tell us not to go forward. So I know that's come up here, and again, it, it's, it's got to be in that, that vein. In the letter, though, uh, it did say that it, this would cause a disruption or to their banquet facility or something, or un a competitive disadvantage. I, I don't remember all the words that they were using. Their objection is based on the process, and, and they've reiterated that to us clearly, um, that they have no problem if a 300-person event venue opens up across the street, as long as they go through the same process. Just in closing, because I know we mm -hmm. have a full agenda to still uh, get to. Uh, whatever we do with these ordinances as they progress, Still, you will be meeting with the group. You, they will be advised of what's happening or they'll see the ordinances. Uh, the transparency that you're attempting to keep in a balance will continue. Is that correct? Of course. Okay. I, I just don't want the people to walk out of here tonight thinking that, you know, the doors are shut. They're not going to get any information. Um, no, but we, we can only move so fast. So, yeah. I mean, two weeks goes by and everyone wants new ordinances drafted up. It's just not that easy. We are getting um, input from multiple stakeholders, uh, and we bring it when we have something. Um, the idea that we're not transparent, or that we're not sharing this information, or that we're 
talking to other people, I mean, that should be the process. We're talking to multiple people, um, and, and everyone knows who's involved at this point. Um, I just, I'd like to address a, another topic that came up tonight. I have a resident, I think her name is Melissa. Um, one of the biggest issues we have in our town are, is obviously the rentals. I'm very proud Mr. Howard is, is on top of it. We have a few really good ordinances coming up tonight. Um, please call, call town hall with an address. Uh, if you have, if there's suspicious activity, we need to, you need to report it. And another comment was made about the fines being too low. We totally agree, but our hands are tied because of Trenton, because so, of the policies uh, that are, are, are coming out of, out of the Capitol. Our hands are tied with raising those fines. We'd love to raise those fines. Yeah, uh, state law sets a, a maximum that we can charge in terms of fines. So um, where we can charge a larger amount, we do. Uh, there are some exceptions, but it, they're few and far between. And believe it or not, the $1,000 that we charge now is pretty high for our first offense, especially because our ordinance calls for that even before a notice of violation, which we do, we utilize all the time, and we've been threatened to be challenged on that, so that, that it's too high. So it comes from both sides. There is a maximum. We can't go much higher, especially off the onset. A couple other items that were just questions. There was a few questions very quickly on all the resolutions. We're probably going to have to watch the video back to just address them, so we'll do that. Um, next meeting with the uh, qualifications of the new rent board secretary, that position's an administrative position. Um, we're giving an opportunity to somebody, an employee in community development, and we think, you know, we hope he's up to the task and we're going to train him and get him going, but it's um, an administrative position that we think is well within his qualifications. Um, and then we address the, the minimum fines that you had mentioned. Housing, don't give me too much credit as saying that we've got it under control or I'm on top of it. It is a ever moving issue. Um, council has given us the ability to staff up. There's a couple of ordinances on today that I'll talk about when we get to them on the introduction so they don't get lost in the sauce, but we're trying our best and we're going to continue to find whatever tools we have to right the ship. And just quickly, so, so some of the revenue, uh, the Chapter 159 insertions, those are monies that came in after the budget. So we are allowed by law to put them in by vote of council. Um, they may or may not be spent this year. Typically, we'll carry them forward if we can so that we can um, dedicate a purpose to them for next year. So, One, one other thing, uh, to uh, dispel the air of impropriety, could, could we take a look at the, uh, the, the reasoning for the Eagle Oaks assessment and then come back with, with that? I can jump in on, on part of that. I'm not a tax expert, um, and our tax assessor has so many initials and licenses after his name. He has to follow a special set of regulations under the law that only he, you know, he's applicable for. I do know that golf courses are taxed at a different level than just regular property. So on initial glance, it might seem odd that so much vacant land and open space is taxed so low for a golf course, but that's across the state. Uh, there's never been a question I've asked our tax assessor that he can't answer. We will ask the question, and I 3,000% believe he has the answer, and we'll get that for you next meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Um, there was a question, uh, Mr. White, you went a little fast on some of them, so I didn't get all of them, but one of the questions you had asked about the tenant in the municipal building, um, that is our town nursing tenant. They take up uh, quite a lot of space in one of our lower wings. This is not a new lease. This is they're just exercising their option to extend the lease, and we are increasing the rent under the extension by 2%. One last thing to the gentleman from Eagle Oaks. Uh, uh, things got going pr pretty quick uh, that when we got back from our night there when we were speaking. Uh, and boy, they really jumped on it fast. But we're, that that's going to get going. Now we're going to see where it's going to go now. So. Yeah, and I will say quickly, thank you uh, to Mr. Scioli, and thank you. I don't know if Felicia's still here. Yeah, there she is. Hey, Felicia. Um, so, yeah, thank you. It's nice to have people show up and acknowledge when we meet with them. And to that point, we make ourselves available. So anytime people want to schedule an appointment, they're free to call town hall. And okay. usually Matt and I will be able to accommodate it. Okay. 
May I have a motion? Does anybody want to pull any of the resolutions out from 185 through, I guess, 225C? I go to 233. So resolution 24-225C is a resolution of the Township of Powell authorizing an economic impact study due to offshore wind project. So I think that's where we go up to. We go to 225B and then the rest go individually. Well, we're adding C, 225C is yeah. what I just read. Sorry. Are you good, Fred? Yeah. I'm just reading that. I'm okay. sure I had the right one. So, may I have a motion? R24185 through R24225C. I'll make a motion. May I have a second? Second. Councilman Fisher? Yes. Councilman Gazier? Yes. Councilman O'Donnell? Yes. Mayor Berger? Yes. Thank you. The consent resolutions passed. Um, may I have a motion for resolution 24226 providing for the insertion of special items of revenue in the 2024 budget? I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Councilman Fisher? Yes. Councilman Gaysher? Yes. Councilman O'Donnell? Yes. Mayor Berger? Yes. Thank you. You want to group the rest together, 227 through 232? They're all chapter 159s? Well, it said voted separately. That's why I was doing it that oh, way. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, yeah, if we could do it as a group, they're all chapter 159. Yes. Okay, then I would say if we can go, let's just go back and do 226 through 232. Perfect. May I have a motion? Motion to accept R24-226 through, are we stopping at 232? Yes. Yes. Through R24-232. Second. Councilman Fisher? Yes. Councilman Gazier? Yes. Councilman O'Donnell? Yes. Mayor Berger? Yes. Thank you. The resolutions pass. Uh, resolution R24-233, acknowledgement and endorsement in support of the State of New Jersey Department of Transportation installation of a traffic signal at the intersection of State Highway 33 and Yellow Brook Road. May I have a motion? I'll make the motion. Second. Councilwoman Fisher? Yes. Councilman Gazier? Yes. Councilwoman O'Donnell? Yes. Mayor Berger? Yes. Thank you. The resolution passes. Okay. Unfinished business. The public hearing and adoption of ordinances. Ordinance 024-12. Bond ordinance providing for the documentation digitization appropriating $1 million Therefore, and authorizing the, is the issuance of $400,000 in bonds and notes to finance a portion of the cost thereof, authorized in and by the Township of Howell. Um, may I open up for public comment on this ordinance? On this ordinance. I'd like to close. May I have a motion? Motion to accept ordinance. No, we're going to close public comment. Motion to close public comment. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Motion, have, motion to adopt Ordinance 24-12. Thank you. May I have a second? Second. Councilwoman Fisher? Yes. Councilman Gazier? Yes. Councilwoman O'Donnell? Yes. Mayor Berger? Yes. Thank you. The ordinance is adopted. <clears throat> ordinance 24-18. Ordinance setting forth and amending and supplementing the salary range schedule for the salaries of certain officers and employees of the Township of Howell. I'd like to open this for public comment. Seeing none, I'd like to close. May I have a motion? Motion to close public. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. May I have a motion to adopt the ordinance? Motion to adopt ordinance 24-18. May I have a second? Second. Councilwoman Fisher? Yes. Councilman Gazier? Yes. Councilwoman O'Donnell? Yes. Mayor Berger? Yes. Thank you. The ordinance is adopted. Ordinance 2419, Ordinance of the Township of Howell in the County of Monmouth and the State of New Jersey, repealing Chapter 188 Land Use, Article 24, Stormwater Control, and establishing new Article 24, Stormwater Management Regulations. I would like to open uh, motion to open for public comment. Motion to open for public comment. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.
Good evening, Mayor and Council. Mark Preci to Castle Court. I'm glad Council is finally uh, taking action on this a year later. Um, this one particularly upsets me, and I'll explain why. The New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection provided model ordinances for municipalities to adopt their stormwater regulations and bring them into compliance with the new inland flood protections. This was last July, and they told the municipalities that you had a year to update your regs. And tonight we've heard different people talk about health, safety, and welfare of the community numerous times. That has been the theme of, of tonight, that the professionals have to look out for the health, safety, and, and protection of the community. I couldn't think of something that's more important to the health, safety, and welfare of the community than making sure that all development in town is in compliance with the most stringent stormwater regulations to prevent flooding on adjacent properties, on streets. I mean, I could, the list could go on and on. I feel like you're making our argument. Okay. Yeah, but, it, but Mayor, it, it's a, a year, and I'm getting to I my point. I respect that. I respect that, Mr. Parisi, but you're making our argument. You're saying what we're saying. Fair enough. <laughs> so what, when I had addressed this several months ago about, you know, hey, there was a gentleman that came up here talking about there was flooding on his property over off on the west side of Route 9 and saying that, you know, we should, you know, we, there's a lot of applications for development that are coming before our land use boards. We should act quickly on getting these stormwater regs updated. I had even spoken with Deputy Mayor Nadell last year, and he said that this was something that was going to be a priority for him. I believe he probably did speak to some of the professionals. And my understanding of, of it was that, they, that our professionals were looking into it, that we had some time, that there wasn't a rush to update the new stormwater regulations, that municipalities can basically write their own version of the regulations. They didn't have to adopt the model ordinances that were pr uh, provided by the DEP and that they were going to take care of this, you know, as they saw fit, only to now look at the adopted ordinances and realizing that they are word for word the model noise or uh, the model ordinances that the DEP put forward last July. So I don't, you know, it, it is what it is at this point. I mean, we can't go back in time and I've updated these regulations months ago we we're getting to them now in june the deadline to update them was is next month they'll be in effect by the time the the deadline comes in in july but i think about all of the applications that have come before our planning board and, and zoning board in the last year where these applications had we adopted these ordinances last july they would have been in effect and all of these new applications that had come in after the fact would have had to comply with the new regulations and those applications that were either either are pending at the at these boards or were already approved didn't have to comply with the new regulations. And I'll give two examples. There was a couple of the uh, these large uh, affordable housing projects where there, the applications came in around sometime last spring, summer, fall of last year, and they didn't have to comply with the new regulations. I could be wrong, but it's my understanding that, that, that these regs were not, they were not in place. So I'm glad they're getting adopted tonight. I just wanted to come up here and express my feelings about health, safety, and welfare, that it would have been nice if these, if the town was going to adopt the model ordinances that were provided last year, that we didn't have to wait a year to adopt them. Thank you. <coughs> Is there anyone else that wants to speak on that ordinance? I'd like a motion to close. I'll make a motion to close public Second. comment. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'd like to just give a short comment on that. Sure. Um, state law passes changes state law. Uh, stormwater regs change. Howell Township, just because our ordinance says something different, doesn't get to be any different than state law or less stringent than state law. Every development that's come, on, come in since this uh, regulation passed, if their submittal was after the date of the regulation passing, time of application, they've complied with the law. The, the one-year window given to the municipality is just for that, is to give us time to review what we want to do. There is a county review process that ha this had to go through, and now we're here adopting. 
doesn't mean any project came in that was non-compliant with state law. Every project that's been in since this law was passed that is applicable to this law has been reviewed and approved in accordance with this law. So we are very cognizant of health, safety, and welfare, and like Matt said, the law goes into effect. They complied. We're just passing it now to tighten up our local ordinances pursuant to that, so. May I, motion, may I have a motion to accept the ordinance, to adopt? I'll make a motion to adopt ordinance uh, 2419. Second. Councilman Fisher? Yes. Councilman Gaysher? Yes. Councilman O'Donnell? Yes. Mayor Berger? Yes. Thank you. The ordinance is adopted. Introduction of ordinances 024-20. An ordinance setting forth and amending and supplementing the salary range schedule for the salaries of certain officers and employees of the Township of Howe. May I have a motion to introduce? Motion to introduce ordinance 24-20. May I have a second? Second. Councilman Fisher? Yes. Councilman Gaysher? Yes. Councilman O'Donnell? Yes. Mayor Berger? Yes. Thank you. The ordinance is properly introduced. I would like to introduce ordinance 24-21, amending ordinance amending chapter 150 fire prevention, article 1, fire prevention code, section 3, establishment and duties of local enforcing agency per recommendation of the Township Bureau of the Fire Prevention. Seriously? May I have a motion to introduce the ordinance? Motion to introduce ordinance 24-21. May I have a second? Second. Councilman Fisher? Yes. Councilman Gazier? Yes. Councilman O'Donnell? Yes. Mayor Berger? Yes. Thank you. The ordinance is properly introduced. Ordinance 24-22, ordinance amending the chapter 139 fees, article 10, fire service, section 17, 18, and 19, per recommendation of the Township Bureau of Fire Prevention. May I have a motion? to introduce the ordinance. I'll make a motion to introduce ordinance 2422. Second. Councilman Fisher? Yes. Councilman Gaysher? Yes. Councilman O'Donnell? Yes. Mayor Berger? Yes. Thank you. The ordinance is properly introduced. Ordinance 2423. Ordinance authorizing traffic enforcement upon real property known as Block 141, Lot 13-01 and 14 in accordance with the request of the property owner. May I have a motion to introduce? Move to introduce ordinance 24-23. Second. Councilman Fisher? Yes. Councilman Gazier? Yes. Councilman O'Donnell? Yes. Mayor Berger? Yes. Thank you. The ordinance is introduced. 24, ordinance 24-24, ordinance of the Township of Howell, County of Monmouth, State of New Jersey, amending and supplementing Chapter 178 of the Township Code entitled Housing Code Rental Property. May I have a motion to introduce? Motion to introduce Ordinance 2424. Second. Second. Councilman Fisher? Yes. Councilman Gazier? Yes. Councilman O'Donnell? Yes. Mayor Berger? Yes. Thank you. The ordinance is properly introduced. Ordinance 24-25, Ordinance of the Township of Howell, County of Monmouth, State of New Jersey, amending and supplementing Chapter 139 of the Township Code entitled Fees. May I have a motion to introduce? I'll move to introduce Ordinance 24-25. Second. Councilwoman Fisher? Yes. Councilman Gazier? Yes. Councilwoman O'Donnell? Yes. Mayor Berger? Yes. Thank you. The ordinance is properly introduced. Um, ordinance 24-27. 26, sorry. I'm sorry. 24-26. Two ordinance of the Township of Howell, County of Monmouth, State of New Jersey, authorizing an outdoor advertising sign lease agreement with Premier Media, LLC. Block 185, Lot 48. Can I have an ordinance to introduce? Motion to introduce Ordinance 24-26. Second. Councilman Fisher? Yes. Councilman Gaysher? Yes. Councilman O'Donnell? Yes. Mayor Berger? Yes. Thank you. The ordinance is properly introduced. Ordinance 24-27. Ordinance of the Township of Howell, County of Monmouth, State of New Jersey, authorizing an outdoor advertising sign lease agreement with Premier Media, LLC, Block 142, Lot 4. May I have a motion to introduce? Motion to introduce Ordinance 2427. Second. Councilman Fisher? Yes. Councilman Gazier? Yes. Councilman O'Donnell? Yes. Mayor Berger? Yes. Thank you. The ordinance is properly introduced. May I? Um, ordinance 24 28. An ordinance of the Township of Howell County of Monmouth, State of New Jersey, authorizing an outdoor advertising sign lease agreement with Premier Media LLC, Block 
35-82, lot 40. May I have a motion to introduce? Motion to introduce ordinance 24-28. Second. Councilwoman Fisher. Yes. Councilman Gazer. Yes. Councilwoman O'Donnell. Yes. Mayor Berger. Yes. Thank you. The ordinance is properly introduced. Uh, the next meeting dates will be June 25, 2024, executive at 6, regular session at 7. May I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? Motion to adjourn. Second. May I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you.